for joining today, whether you are here in person or joining via Teams. Please indicate Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Mayor of the Borough of Bracknell Forest, Councillor Ankur Shiv Bandari. Good evening. I would like to welcome everyone to this hybrid council meeting. Please note that I am waiving the requirement within the council procedure rules which requires members to stand when addressing the meeting. Please remain seated. The meeting is being broadcast and recorded. If there are any technical issues, please bear with us. Before I open the meeting, I'd like to invite my chaplain to say a prayer. Welcome, Reverend Dunk. Good evening, everybody. Let us gather our thoughts and prayers together, whether we are a person of faith or of no faith, so that we may all come together for the common good of all our communities and peoples. May our area be blessed by you, O Lord, and may we all seek to do the best for all of our residents, no matter what background, race, colour or creed they're from. May we grow and move forward together as a family. Where there is division and injustice, may we bring healing and wisdom. Where there is fear and prejudice, may we bring love and education. Where there is homelessness and poverty, may we bring shelter and food and drink. May we aid the weak and vulnerable, May we enable those from all walks of life to achieve their full potential. Lord God, equip us with your strength, and may you bestow us with your numerous gifts to achieve all of these things in your name. Lord God, be with our council tonight as they discuss our borough of Bracknell Forest and the way forward for our area in these difficult times. Lord God, bless our Mayor Anchor and all those who serve on the council. We ask, Lord, that you may guide and inspire them as they seek to make the right decisions for Bracknell Forest. In this Christian season of Lent, may we seek to become kinder and more selfless, that we may become more caring and sharing within our community. May we all focus on love and the things that unite us rather than divide us. We give thanks for our King and ask you to bless him and the royal family. We pray for peace in our world and an end to violence, poverty, homelessness and intolerance. And as Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine, and we pray for an end to the war. Lord, enable us to strive to do good always and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, we pray that we may always respect others, even though they may be different from ourselves. May we learn from one another and show God's love for one another, even those we struggle to be reconciled with. Lord, we pray that we all may have integrity and honesty in all that we do and steer us through these turbulent times of national and worldwide emergencies. Give us all the courage to stand up for what is right, even though things may be difficult. We pray for all of our councillors from different viewpoints and parties. We ask you, Lord, to always ensure that our councillors always seek to work together for the common good, always focusing on serving our community to the best of their abilities and for the good of all. 
Lord, enable them to bring all of our community together with love, compassion and truth, so that we may prosper and grow in respect, support and tolerance for one another. Finally, we pray for those who have died and who are suffering due to the awful earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. We pray and give thanks for the aid agencies, medical and search teams from around the world, offering much needed help and care in these harsh and traumatic times. Now let us all please stand for a minute's silence to remember all those who have died and are affected by this terrible and heart-wrenching situation. May God guide you and be with you all this meeting. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dunk. <clears throat> I declare the meeting open. Now to the first item on the agenda. Are there any apologies for absence? Yes, ma'am, I've received no apologies. Thank you, Madam Chief Executive. Uh, yes, Councillor Hayden. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Bruno Walker has asked for his apologies. Okay, we'll do that. Councillors joining remotely, please turn on your microphone only and state that you are present when the Chief Executive calls your name and anyone who does not respond will be recorded as giving their apologies. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. We have Councillor Angel. Present. Councillor Finch. Present. Councillor Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, where are you? Sorry. Thank you. Oh, there you are. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harrison. Present. Councillor Ms. Hayes. Present. Councillor Mrs. McKenzie. Present. Councillor Mrs. Mackenzie Boyle. Present. Councillor Porter. Present. Councillor Skinner. Present. Don't think I've missed anybody. Thank you, Madam Chief Executive. Agenda item two is to recommend for approval as a correct record the minutes of the council meeting held on 11th of January 2023. Before I ask Councillor Betterson to second the motion. Please indicate if you have an issue with the, with the accuracy. Okay. Madam Deputy Mayor, has anyone joining remotely indicated that there is an issue? They have not, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Bettison, are you happy to second the minutes as a correct record? I'm very happy to second those minutes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bettison. As nobody has indicated that they have any issue, therefore those are agreed. The full text for declarations of interest is set out on the agenda at item three. If any councillor has a disclosable pecuniary interest or an affected interest to declare, please indicate by raising your hand and I will come to you in turn. Okay, I don't see any indication in the room. Uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, has anyone joining remotely indicated that they have an interest? Those rejoining remotely have not. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. There are no interests indicated. We now come to agenda item four, which are Mayor's announcements. If I can have 
on the screen please okay so first of all we have the mayor's so this year for the mayor's charity what i decided was that whatever money we raise as part of mayor's charity should be spent for causes within bracknell forest so that was a very conscious choice it meant that we had to go through certain procedures and uh, ways of making that happen and we found very good partners in bakshar community foundation who are thankfully helping us in terms of raising those funds so there are various um, activities and drives underway and we were um, we had a drive um, uh, not this sunday but the sunday before that uh, where i was joined by a lot of other fellow councillors residents as well and and we had a very very uh, very good drive raising funds for mayor's charity we have another drive tomorrow at tesco martins heron and whatever we are doing it is all communicated and being communicated on the mayor's social media pages and also on bracknell forest social media pages so all the money that will be raised as part of mayor's it's called mayor's opportunity awards charity fund will be distributed to up to five charities voluntary organizations or community groups who are focused on helping the residents of bracknell forest if you look at the mayor's uh, uh, social media pages you will see the link to nominate those community groups or charitable organizations as well the last date to do that is the 22nd of march by 10 am and of course if anyone wants to contribute to the mayor's charity fund you are more than welcome to do that and all of that is on our social media pages and we'll continue to communicate on that so everyone who is supporting either in terms of uh, human effort or monetary resources that is much appreciated thank you so much for that coming on to the next one so we had a great event a couple of weeks ago which was uh, the lexicon awards celebrating the great work that happens uh, in lexicon so you know there were different types of awards uh, mainly celebrating different retailers of different sizes but also organizations for example we had uh, a small business called kl dance steps who do great work for the community but they are also part of the lexicon so it was a great event and i was joined by uh, madam chief executive councilor Mar mark brunel walker uh, there as well and it was a fantastic evening celebrating the success of lexicon which i think i can very safely say is, is sort of a jewel in the crown of brackle forest um, so those were sort of my key announcements coming to the good news stories um councillor uh, mrs dorothy hayes i believe you have couple of good news stories to share thank you mr mayor I, they're not so much well they are good news stories but they're for your diaries as well ladies and gentlemen and i'm sure though we're busy at the moment you will find time i'm hoping first of all let's start with the crowthorn crows or as i know them the crowthorn reduce <coughs> our waste community if you're free on saturday and you'd like to do something or get out there to talk to people, got a household item that needs fixing, can't afford to get it fixed, don't want it to go to landfill, the Repair Cafe. This group of the community have gone, for the last six months, have gone the full hog of putting something together. And you can go along there to the hub of the Baptist Church on Crowthorn High Street on Saturday, the uh, at 10.30 and most of the day and there will be people there. Go to have a look, see what they're doing in the community to make sure we're doing something in the community to reduce our waste. It's worth the visit, okay? <coughs> because I'd like to see a lot more of these repair cafes opened in our borough. The more we can save from landfill, the better. Like the 6,000 ton of food waste last year that didn't go to food, uh, landfill, I will be giving you notice now that I will be able to tell you good success stories, not only with the, the, the flats and the houses, at the next meeting we will have. And last but not least, that was this Saturday. On the 11th of March, you should have had a sticker on those that have the bins. I, with the team, and they are great officers, come and meet this team of officers that bring our, well, I call it the we, it's the electrical goods and the foods that we are taking out of landfill, 
the electrical goods and clothing that we collect at the John Nike Centre. Just come and have a look. Just come and see the good work that these, our residents, are doing. So in your diaries, let's put them in, and I'd like to see some smiling faces. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mrs. Hayes. Uh, Councillor Dr. Barnard, I believe you have something to share. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So um, my good news announcement has been a few years in the making. I, I want to take some of you that might remember this back to May 1997, when Conservative candidates standing for the unitary election stood on a simple pledge. They wanted all schools to be good schools. Um, I think many of us remember Council Award on numerous occasions shared that, and it has been a focus, and it has been one of the key objectives of this administration since. Well, I can announce that after yesterday, with the publication of the latest Ofsted report into one of our primary schools, that all our schools are now good or outstanding. It is a tremendous achievement because if you think about it, there are 40 largely independent institutions, some academies, some local authority schools, who forged a partnership with the school improvement team at the Borough Council, who signed up to a school improvement and accountability strategy, and as a consequence of that, this has been delivered. There's no complacency. We know that there have been huge challenges facing our schools going through and after COVID. Schools in the last year or so have faced an unprecedented wave of, of sickness, illness, and, and staffing pressures. But our school leaders, our governors, the whole school communities have worked collectively and collegiately together to drive up the standards of education in Bracknell Forest. I think this really, really matters because if we are actually going to fulfill what I still believe to be our motto, which is a borough of opportunity, it's really important that we make sure our children have the best possible education they can. And you know, there are other areas that we're working on. But why does this matter in practice? Well, on the 1st of March, parents who've been applying for secondary school places in Bracknell Forest will receive emails, in some cases letters, you know, indicating which school they've been offered a place at. And in Bracknell Forest, unlike many other boroughs, we will be able to say you will be going to a good or an outstanding school. So I think, you know, thanks to everyone, and also to our governors who are councillors as well, because your role's not just in supporting the schools, but also in the school improvement programme and journey that we've had within Bratner Forest Council have helped energise and, and, and motivate that programme over the years. And I think, you know, I'd, I'd like to pay tribute tonight to our former head of the school improvement service, Rachel Morgan, and Zoe Livingstone, our head of improvement, school improvement at this time, who lead a great team of advisors who work collegiately, challengingly, but at the same time with our schools, a long way that partnership continue. So I think, you know, for all our schools, an absolutely fantastic bit of news. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barnard. What an absolutely brilliant piece of news. And can I also further add my congratulations to the team at the council, you know, who go over and beyond to make sure that we achieve these results. So thank you so much. Um, we now come to the regular report of the executive at agenda item five. I call on the leader of the council, Council Bettison, to present the report. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. It gives me great pleasure to introduce this report on the work of the executive since we last met here in this chamber as a full council. Um, there have been two meetings since the January council, uh, at the end of January and beginning of February. And uh, the uh, key things, and incidentally, I won't mention the budget in this part, although, of course, as everybody in this room must know, the executive have been working extremely hard on the budget, um, but I don't want to steal any thunder from my executive colleague, uh, who's the uh, 
uh, Executive Member for Finance and Resources. He will be uh, sharing much with us later in the proceedings today, tonight. Um, but uh, looking at uh, some of the other stuff that the, the Executive has been doing, um, culture, delivery and public protection. Um, there has been a polling district's polling place review and this is um, necessitated by the recent boundary reviews and, uh, and included uh, within the recommendations were the appointment of designated alternative polling places where the returning officer could relocate polling stations at short notice uh, should the primary venue not be available due to any unforeseen circumstances. So the intention is that um, for every polling station there'll be a substitute that's already been approved and checked and we have a, a plan for using it should, should the need arise. Um, so there's been a, a several alternative locations having been evaluated and uh, the uh, Boundary Review Working Group throughout the review process um, uh, has have been looking at them as well, and a number of these were included in the scheme as suitable alternative polling places. Um, this, uh, there is a recommendation on this, which will appear later um, this evening, so uh, I trust that uh, colleagues will be able to support that recommendation. Moving on to culture, delivery and public protection, the final agreement for everyone active COVID financial support. And the executive has approved the basis of the settlement with the council's leisure services provider, everyone active, relating to the financial support provided by the council in recognition of the impact of COVID-19 on trading at the sites managed by them. Then uh, in terms of transformation and finance, uh, design and construction support procurement update, the executive has agreed to extend the current design and construction support contract with the existing managing partner for a further two year period. And the current 10 year contract um, is due to end in June of this year. But following a procurement exercise which attracted minimal market interest and only one submission, it was decided that the most cost-effective approach would be to extend the current contract for a two-year period on the existing terms and conditions. And that will ensure that the Council retains the technical support required to aid in the delivery of capital projects, whilst allowing sufficient time for us to explore future options. Then uh, with children, young people and learning, the joint child care legal team, heads of terms for updated shared services agreement. The executive has agreed the heads of terms that form the basis of a new shared service agreement between all the Berkshire local authorities and the joint child care legal team employed by Reading Borough Council. The executive have also agreed that authority should be delegated to the borough solicitor to negotiate the final terms of the detailed agreement. And this follows a review in 2019 by Berkshire's chief executives into the arrangements and costs of the shared legal service, which explored possible service improvements and effective joint working across the partner organisations to reduce overall costs. And uh, in adult services, health and housing, the uh, new housing strategy for 2023 to 2028, the executive has approved the final draft of the housing strategy for that period for publication including the amendments made in response to stakeholder con consultation. The other supporting documents were also approved for publication, including the consultation report and the executive summary. The housing strategy sets out the council's ambition to ensure that everyone has a safe, stable 
and genuinely affordable home where they can be independent and financially secure. Stakeholder cons consultation was an important part of the development of this strategy. It enabled residents, partners, housing providers and councillors to identify key local housing issues and to shape the actions needed to deliver the objectives in, within the strategy. And adult services, health and housing, the zero to age 19 public health nursing procurement plans. The executive has approved the procurement plan to retender public health nursing services for zero to 19 year olds from the 1st of April 2024 for a period of five years with up to two further 12 month extensions. The services will, be met, will meet the statutory requirements of the Health and Social Care Act 2012 in respect of children and young people age zero to 19. The current contract was due to end in March 2023 but it has been extended for a year to enable a full procurement to be undertaken. Options for joint procurement with other local authorities in East Berkshire have been explored, but have been, had to be discounted at this time due to the different needs and delivery arrangements of the councils involved. Thank you very much indeed. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my report. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Councillor Madison. Um, okay, I was going to say, any questions? Councillor Bridwell? Yes, thank you very much. Um, could you give a bit more detail on the settlement that you, was agreed between the Council and uh, everyone active? Um, I cannot do that in public because it is a, a uh, part two private, uh, it's a, obviously they're a company and so we can't be discussing their affairs, but I'm quite happy to either arrange for you to have a briefing from officers um, or from, uh, from the relevant executive member, whichever you prefer. Thank you, I'll arrange that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Bidwell. Any other questions, members in the room? I don't see a request or a question in the room. Uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, are there any questions from those joining remotely? None from those joining remotely. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bettison. Thank you. <coughs> we'll just take a few seconds. Okay. We now come to the recommendation on page 21 of the agenda report relating to the revised polling district and polling place scheme. Councillor Birch, would you like to move this recommendation? There it is. Shall I do that one again because the mic wasn't on? Yes, uh, Councillor Birch, uh, I'm pleased to move the recommendation at 5.1.1 on page 21. Thank you, Councillor Birch. And uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Chris Turrell, um, I'm happy to second that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Turrell, for uh, second that. seconding that. Does any councillor wish to speak? I don't see any requests in the room. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, any requests to, uh, to speak from those joining remotely? No, there aren't. Okay. Uh, the recommendation is set out on the screen. Can all those present in the chamber please indicate by raising your hand if you support the recommendation? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you, that is carried. The next item for us to discuss is the council's financial plans and revenue budgets for 2022-23.
The council procedure rules indicate a five-minute time limit for each councillor's contribution, but we have traditionally relaxed this for both the proposer and the opposition leader when discussing the budget. I intend to continue that tradition. <coughs> okay, does Councillor Hayden, can I request to please, yeah? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm delighted. I'm Councillor Hayden, by the way, the Executive Member for Transformation and Finance. I'm delighted for the first time since 2020, in fact, this decade, to be introducing the budget in the Council Chamber with all the members can, can actually be here. That's a very welcome return to normality. Unfortunately, outside the Chamber, the rest of the world continues to be a little bit in turmoil. It's not any longer re uh, caused by COVID, although sadly it's not left us completely. In its place, we have economic turmoil, inflation and interest rates are at levels not experienced for years. The dreadful situation in Ukraine is impacting us everywhere, and we have national political turmoil with now having our third prime minister in just over six months. Inevitably, that's brought a high degree of uncertainty to our budget and the planning for 23-24. I worry that I seem to say this most years, but it really has been difficult this year, but I'll go on to explain the specific challenges that we faced and how we dealt with them. Nonetheless, I'm proposing a budget that is only possible because it's built on sound, prudent, and strong financial management. In addition to maintaining our high service levels, which we're justifiably proud of, it's preserving a green borough, which I know is important to every resident, and providing a great place to live, work, and relax. Lastly, and certainly not least, is our particular attention and care of vulnerable residents, which is even stronger this year because of the underlying financial and international climate. All councils have a legal duty to set a balanced budget every year. In very simple terms, this means that we plan to spend, what we plan to spend must come within the level of resources available to us. Sadly, in recent times, we've seen a growing number of authorities, one a very near neighbor, for whom that's not been possible. I'd like to make it absolutely clear. Bracknell Forest Council is not in or even close to that situation. However, we've known for many years that our future level of government funding is at risk. The business rates retention system, which has served Bracknell Forest well since 2013, has long been set to change in 2023-24. We expected the planned national business rates revaluation to proceed, but the impact of a national revaluation is always extremely difficult to predict. All members will be aware that this council has been facing the added uncertainty of our single biggest rate pair being transferred to the government's central list. That's a potentially significant drop in revenues. The impact of these changes could have been catastrophic for our finances. We as a council have been proportionally proportionately the largest beneficiary from the ben business rates retention system in England. This, of course, means that proportionately we've had the potential to, to lose the most from any changes in it. I really do want to acknowledge our financial strength and our finances are very strong. This is a measure of our Director of Resources, Stuart McKellar, and his team. And believe me, I know there isn't a stronger team anywhere. They've helped us plan for a worst-case scenario that's enabled us to plan and take steps to ensure that this possibility is averted. Stuart, may I put on record our thanks to you and your team? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mentioned the loss of our largest single business rate pair. In the finance settle settlement, we've been compensated pound for pound for the central list change and seen a modest increase in overall business rates income next year. That was really good news for us. We'd been facing a potential recurring loss of income of over four million pounds a year. I'm sure that members will agree that this is a very, very positive result for the borough. 
Of course, it's inevitable that there'll be further changes to the local government finance system in the future. However, with a general election certain to come in or before January 2025, there is little chance that the funding system will change significantly in the next few years. Thankfully, this gives us a period of relative financial certainty which is welcome and will enable us, this administration, to focus on what it does best, delivering high quality services for the residents and businesses of Bracknell Forest. With all these terrific services we provide, it's almost impossible to single out anything specifically. Um, however, I'm going to, especially in the light of what Councillor Barnard's announced this evening. Um, following an extremely rigorous Ofsted inspection in July last, ye last year to, on our children's social care team, the team was judged outstanding. This is an almost unprecedented rate rating outstanding, and we should celebrate that. We should be proud. I am. This is an exceptional achievement and one that all members should be proud of. Our investment in the family safeguarding model has been the basis of this. Over the past few years, that this has achieved the impact we hoped it would, delivering the highest possible levels of care and support to the most vulnerable children in our borough. And that, with the good schools as well, again, is something that we should all be very, very proud of. It's also helped us buck the national trend of ever-increasing cost to deliver these critical services. The team's focus on early support is reducing the number of children becoming looked after and requiring very specialist, very expensive placements. As a result, the children's social care budget is reducing next year by over one and a half million. I have to stress, this is not making savings, but to reflect current actual costs. This, is prove, this proves it's possible to provide the highest quality services for less money. One of the primary objectives of the Conservative administration. Um, it's also a real reflection on the capability and competence of our own officers. We are, of course, having to increase all our budgets due to inflation. The council is affected by rising prices in the same way as all households and businesses. We've allowed just under 10 million pounds in the budget to cover the cost of inflation. Now, this is three times the inflationary cost we would normally face, three times. In providing this in full allows us to maintain current service levels, which I've already said that we haven't cut any services despite the prevailing pressures. In addition, there are some services where demand is increasing and others where we believe that increasing budget levels from the current year is important. The first area is highways another area where our roads are generally regarded by everybody as excellent. Ratnall Forest has typically spent more than the level of its local transport grant allocation every year. For 23-24, we're proposing to go even further and double the capital investment funded by the council. In total, our capital spending in the highways infrastructure is increasing by nearly £2 million in 23-24 and more in the following years. We're also investing in brand new temporary housing for homeless families at a site between Uplarden Way and the Bagshot Road. It's currently inaccessible, but our officers have successfully bid for external funding to construct a new access road. I find this has been quite innovative of them, making it possible to develop the current brownfield site and build up to seven new homes for households who desperately need them. Turning to the revenue budget, the bit that you've all been waiting for, we're adding almost half a million pounds to the budget used to support bus services across the borough. With the current bus contracts ending this autumn, our aim is to secure a continuation of current routes for those who still rely on them. I have to add, the social value of this should not be underestimated, nor its contribution to the environment. In passing, we have a well thought through environmental strategy and its objectives and its achievements are well, are well worth following. Despite Bracknell Town Centre's economy faring relatively well compared to other towns and cities, our car parking income remains about 15% below pre-pandemic levels. This means we need to reset the income budget at a cost of £350,000. Finally, in terms of the most material budget issues, the pressures on our adult social care and mental health bu budgets continue to rise. 
as is the case every year and in every council. For 23-24, we're adding just over £2 million to the base budget for these services, which simply reflects the current levels of demand and the costs that we're, that we're facing. When we published our draft proposals for consultation, we hadn't received the provisional local government settlement uh, to confirm our funding levels for 23-24. We estimated that there was a potential budget gap of just over £8 million at that stage. Bef and this was before any council tax increase. <coughs> With a maximum permitted increase generating just over £3.5 million, we knew at that point there would need to be a significant withdrawal from our reserves to get a balanced position. Disappointingly, only three responses were submitted to the budget consultation this year, one of which was from Councillor Temperton on behalf of the Labour Group. Thank you, Councillor Temperton. The other responses were generally supportive for our proposals, with one raising concerns about our low level of council tax and how that might impact on our ability to deliver services. While I make no apology for Brackwell Forest having one of the lowest tax levels in the country, it's perhaps interesting to note that is currently around £182 a year below the unitary authority average. That equates to almost a, nine pillion, almost a £9 million difference in the income we receive. I can understand why some people might think this would affect the level of services that we can provide and might assume that our budget plans would need to include, include deep cuts in services. Let me assure you, all this is not the case. As normal, our Overview and uh, Scrutiny Commission considered the draft budget proposals last month. I think it's fair to say that members of the Commission understood the difficult context which we all and other lo local authorities are facing. They did, however, ask that further consideration be given to some specific savings proposal affecting the environment portfolio. I'm pleased to report that the executive has been able to respond positively and remove these savings from the final budget proposal. While we've managed to identify a total of seven and a half million pounds worth of savings to help fund spending pressures, this already total an eye-watering 17 million pounds. I'm pleased to be able to say, as already mentioned, that once again for 2324, our proposed budget does not include any reductions in frontline service delivery. No facilities will close. No one who needs our help will be left wanting. I'm incredibly proud of our track record in supporting vulnerable people. It always has been and always be a priority of this council. For example, we've developed a financial hardship action plan that is guiding our approach to providing support to households who most need it. This is through funding like free school meals during holiday periods, and next year's budget also includes funding from our own resources for an extra post to help support, to help support in delivering this. Low-income households will also receive financial assistance with their council tax bills. This is partly through the government's council tax support scheme. All households eligible for council tax support, both working age and pensioners, will automatically receive a £25 discount and that will benefit over 4,000 households in the budget in, in, in the borough. There's also a discretionary element of this scheme. Earlier today, I took the decision under powers delegated to me by the executive to use this to provide an additional £25 reduction to eligible low-income pen and pensioner households and to almost double the size of our council tax hardship fund for next year, increasing it to £19,000. This fund is managed by our welfare and housing team and is available to provide support to any household experiencing financial hardship. In the past three years, this administration has made available local funded reductions in council tax bills for low income working age families, totaling £400. We'll continue this support in 23 24. <coughs> supplementing the government's £25 scheme with a further £75 council tax discount funded by this council. That will bring the support provided for council tax bills to a cumulative £500 over the last four years. 
This administration just doesn't just say that we wish to support vulnerable households. We deliver on our promises that we do so. I want to stress our continued support for the thousands of households who are finding the current climate difficult. We've always supported vulnerable people, as, and as the needs rise, we're also increasing our support. It would be a record we should be proud of, but we also recognise that pride isn't enough. The actual support needed is being provided. Moving on to schools, funding for our schools is provided through the separate dedicated schools grant. The total average increase next year is 6.2%. It's relatively generous. Unfortunately, indications are it won't be enough to cover all the inflationary cost pressures. So this is continuing to attract attention and focus from the officers. Funding for children and young people is provided separately through the high needs block element of the dedicated schools grant. High needs block funding for Bracknell Forest is increasing by almost 10% in 23-24. However, it's still not sufficient to meet our spending needs as an ongoing issue everywhere. The welfare of our young people, both physical and mental, is paramount, paramount and the councils participating in the Department of Education's Delivering Better Value in SEND programme with additional funding and focus. While the projections show that this plan will reduce the current £7.5 million annual high needs block deficit, the scale of this issue, both locally and nationally, can only be solved by more government intervention. I'll turn now to council tax. The level of council tax increase is one of the most difficult decisions we face every year. As an administration, we have to strike a balance between what feels appropriate and in the short term and what we know is required to maintain the level of services our residents need and deserve in the longer term. We're proposing £7.5 million worth of savings to help balance the budget. We simply cannot go further than this without starting to impact on frontline services. And I've already mentioned our commitment not to reduce these. Given this, we are proposing the maximum level of council tax increase next year. A 2.99% general rise and a 2% increase to help fund adult social care services, totaling 4.99%. We understand that this is the level of increase being proposed by the vast majority of upper tier councils, and that's in England. And if you forgive me, I must also mention that this is lower than the current rate of inflation. While we acknowledge that this won't be universally welcomed, Council Tax and Bracknell Forest will still be in the lowest 10% of unitary authorities, maintaining one of our key manifesto commitments. Even this level of increase isn't enough to secure a balanced budget, so we'll be drawing £3.6 3 million from our future funding reserve. This has been deliberately built up over the last few years to support our medium-term financial plans, and it's therefore absolutely appropriate that we use it to balance next year's budget. In these difficult times, I believe that this is the best possible budget. It's possible due to the strong, astute financial management <coughs> It's also maintaining a borough that's as universally popular as being well run, full of facilities and green spaces, and a great place to live, work and play. It protects all our frontline services and provides targeted financial support at the most vulnerable households who need it most. On that note, I commend this budget to the Council and formally move all the recommendations shown in your budget papers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hayden. Uh, is that seconded? Yes, indeed it is, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peterson. Uh, do you wish to speak to the motion now or reserve the right to speak? I'd like to reserve, please. Thank you, Councillor Peterson. Uh, does any councillor wish to speak? Councillor Mrs. Temperton, I believe you have the first right to speak, as per tradition. Do I speak here or do I go up there? Your choice. Can I go up there? Please. Yeah.
Councillor Mary Temperton. It's very disappointing to find that besides my own and that of overview and scrutiny commission, there are only two responses from residents to the Buswick consultation. I do not know how this compares with other councils, but I truly believe that one of the main causes could be that the budget is always a change budget, and so residents can never see the full amount being spent on items such as road maintenance, waste removal, adult and children's social care. I was pleased to see the suggested removal of 25% of litter bins throughout Bracknell Forest has been dropped. We need more bins, not less. Also, the reduction of the large fly tipping budget. Fly tipping is a blight in every one of our communities. The Labour group supported the reduction in the spraying of weed killer from three to eight times a year to two. The council uses glyphosate. I appreciate that this is a very effective broadleaf weed and grass killer. It is a chemical that will be banned in France and Germany by the end of this year, 2023. It kills insects as well as plants, and the use of it has recently shown to have reduced the seed-eating house sparrow population by 25%. It's sprayed between May and October, seed-producing months. A compromise of twice a year until another less environmentally invasive chemical is discovered would show Bracknell Forest leadership and commitment to biodiversity. <coughs> the Labour group also opposed the introduction of the payment via QR codes at the Bracknell Forest car parks as a non-essential luxury we could do without in these times of extreme financial pressure. We would ask instead that this money be spent on resurfacing more public car parks, those listed as priority three and four. Both of these are in Great Hollands and serve the doctor's surgery, the shopping precinct, the schools, the flats, the industrial units and the gym. These car parks were patched last year, but some of the holes were said to be too deep to be filled. The surfaces have ridges where the tyres have worn away the area between the white markings. I know residents who have tripped. Obviously, they did not report it. These car parks are number three and four in priority. Both have a huge footfall, footfall and are nearly always full. The athletics track car park is only used when there is a track event. It's empty whenever I drive past it. If this is essential, then so too are the ones at Great Hollands. The cost to resurface priority number three is 32,000. It's hoped that the funds will be sufficient to enable this car park to also be resurfaced in 23-24. The cost for car park number four is 44,000. The maintenance of the council housing stock is essential. In the Freedom of Information response, it was stated that out of the 155 properties, 61 were energy derated and five were E-rated. We hope improved insulation will be prioritised as essential for carbon reduction. As it for the budget itself, since the draft was consulted on, the final statement has been published. Compared to the allocations um, predicted in December, some have increased, some have decreased. Government funding to local councils assumed all councils would raise their council tax to the maximum permitted level to cover inflation, energy costs, funding for adult social services and children's social care. These budget proposals indeed raise the Bracknell Forest Council tax by the maximum 4.99% permissible without a referendum. 2% of this rise is to support the high costs of adult social care, which dominate the pressures for this council as they do for every other. These are costs that should be co covered directly by government and not local councils. In Bracknell Forest, most of the properties are rated band C and above. Every 1% rise in council tax brings in 715K, in areas where most homes are A to C rated, the return is very much less, but the needs are still the same. Obviously, using council tax to cover the increasing costs in social care is a postcode lottery. This cannot be fair or equitable, nor can it be sustainable in the long term. Central government should resources with adequate increased relevant funding. Throughout the budget papers, there is a reference to grants. 
Some of these grants are ring-fenced, but others have to be competed for. Preparing bids for this money is time-consuming and costly. Every bid is said to cost about 30K. From a Freedom of Information response, the bid for £5 million for the deck in 2021 cost 15K for work done by officers and another 13,568 for external contractors. The second bid for 8.8 million, 16K for officers' time, and 15,450 for external contractors. Both bids failed. Such sums are being lost by every council in the country at a time when funds are so limited. There must be better ways of funding these projects than having to compete with other councils from the same pot, forever, forever resulting in winners and losers. The budget for schools is ring-fenced. Ring schools will also have to pay the huge increases in energy costs and inflation costs on all resources. Let us hope any pay award settlement comes with extra money from the government. The biggest pressure for school funding is in support of those pupils who require SEN, and especially those of the most challenging education requirements in the high needs block. Again, the money from government is increased, but it still does not cover the cost of provision. The budget indicates an overspend of 7.166 million this year. As we've heard, this deficit has been accumulating for years, and by March 2024, it's estimated to be 30 million. I know the officers and heads are working to provide a solution for this ongoing debt and have acquired a £1 million grant to aid the plans. There is also one of the famous bids to fund the provision for two new schools. All the plans seem to reduce the, all the plans seem to be to reduce the annual deficit, not on paying the huge accrued deficit. The DFE has extended the time limit of their responsibility for this debt until the 31st of March, 2026. But then what happens? This is a very large amount of money owed. This was raised by the head teachers at the schools forum. SEM provision is an ongoing issue and we welcome the, and we welcome the new appointment of dedicated social officer to provide social care oversight when developing the educational health care plans. We also support the payment for the independent advice to parents on SEND as this grant is to be cut by government. We support the additional staff in the children's social care duty and assessment team, the post of support mental health and the out of hours team, and finding the fund to continue the project supporting families with unborn and under one year old, again needed to be paid by this council as the grant is to be cut by government. The Labour Group ha is and has always been supportive of the initiative to continue the £100 council tax discount for low-income working-age households, uplifting the 25 government council tax support allowance. The COVID-19 reserve is planned for the additional work officer to support the much-needed welfare work. This is just a one-year appointment, but may well be needed way beyond this. There is still 1.656 million left over from the COVID funds in March 2024. I am a proud member of this cross-party welfare group and commend all that has been achieved by its dedicated officers. The permanent post of climate change officer is greatly applauded. And we fully support the, the initiative to build flats in Oplarden Way to support the homeless. This budget just reflects the changes to be made, not the ongoing expenditure. It therefore says nothing about money to be spent in providing more parking spaces in residential areas. However, there is 200k to be spent on more bays in areas experiencing difficulties. Only seven locations. But anyone who has recently knocked on a door in Bracknell knows there are many more areas experiencing difficulties than these seven. Many of our grass verges are now trenches of mud Many residents are prisoners in their own home because if they go out after 6 p.m., they will not find a place to work on their return. There must be a way to make this better. This is a major concern for many, many residents. 
We therefore propose an extra 100k be allocated to find solutions to provide some of these bays and improve the verges so there can be parking but without the destruction. Where there is a will, there is a way. Estates in other towns do not look like ours. We are fully appreciative of the fact that bunces once spent are gone forever. For many years, as mentioned before, uh, the money has, uh, money has been put aside to support the finances the day the council no longer receives the business rate from, and I have to quote, I can't say the name, I understand, its biggest business, four million pound a year. This is saved in the future funding reserve fund. This business is now to be moved into the government central list, but Bracknell Forest will be cons compensated for this loss in revenue in the future, so panic over. This reserve was set up for a rainy day, and this day has come. There are many gaps in this budget. When parents with children with special educational needs contact me, they feel the capacity of the council is inadequate to deal with the surge in demand for educational health care plans, lack of educational psychologists, speech and learning therapists, occupational therapists, all essential when completing an EHCP. Resolving this will be expensive. This is a very tough year for all, including local councils. 9.76 million included for inflation, and the fact that this conservative-led administration is proposing to raise the council tax by its minimal permissible level in an election year says it all. There is so much uncertainty the future funding of local councils from the government. A business rate reset, the fair funding review, the public health grant merged into a revised baseline. To enable future years to resolve the issues of the high needs block and SEM provision in this borough, more money will be needed. The government grants are never sufficient and have fallen far short over the last 10 years. New contracts will reflect increased pay awards, higher energy costs, inflation, youth provision throughout the borough is so needed. Every resident is being hit, be they mortgage payer or rent payers. This is the hardest year any of our residents have experienced for a very long time. In April, energy rises will rise an average of 20% and water bills are due to go up 7.5%. Access to the local welfare scheme using money from the government's household support fund for one-off grants for food and essential bills is now well advertised. But knocking on doors has found residents not yet aware of the help available, so publicity needs to be continued. The present funding ends next month. The need to support will not end then. I am relieved that new government funding to support this has been announced, 1.1 million over the next 12 months. There are so many uncertainties that future funding from the government to this about future funding of the government to this council, the council tax will have to be raised to provide a basis for future years, as it is the only guaranteed source of income. The Labour Party response highlighted other areas of concern not resourced in this budget, but my direct amendments are the following. The capital programme, funding for the parking infrastructure upgrade is removed. Funding of 0.044 million from the identified 0.2 million for surface car parks in 24-25 is brought forward to 23-24 to accelerate funding for the Great Homs car park identified as priority for. An additional 0.1 million is funded to make available to improve parking on local housing estates, supplementing current 0.2 million allocation. And the revenue budget, that the proposed reduction of weed spraying from three to two times per annum, including the executive's draft budget proposal, but removed in the final budget, be reinstated with a saving of 0.028 million and the additional costs of these amendments be met from further use of the future funding reserve of 0 0.076 million in 23-24. I move. Thank you, Councillor Dumpton. Is that seconded? Councillor Ms. Brown, you second, yeah, thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, yes. Would you like to speak or reserve, Councillor Ms. Brown? I'll reserve, thank you. Okay. Thank you. If any councillor would like to speak, can you please indicate that you wish to do so and I will come to you in turn. To the amendment. To the amendment. So we are now in the amendment, not in the substantive motion. So we are uh, referring to the amendment now. Would any, any councillor wish to speak to the amendment? Uh, councillor Hayden. Thank you, Harry. Uh, this is Councillor Hayden speaking. Um, I find this, uh, it's quite baffling. Um, an awful lot of what was just discussed uh, is uh, really national issues. But again, we said all the way along that the fair funding is being reviewed. It's a very difficult um, review to conclude, mainly because um, we keep probably less than half the business rates that we raise because it is redistributed. Everything we raise in business rates goes into the government who then redistributes it, <coughs> reapportion it, depending on need. Um, that is a very difficult job, which is one of the reasons that's causing the delays in the fair funding review. It's actively receiving attention, uh, so all those are outside the actual parameters of this budget for the council. Um, the onus on Great Hollands, um, we said that we've, the budget has been planned carefully. It's been planned by the various departments, including highways, including planning, and they've looked at the priorities. This has been looked at by professionals. It's not off-the-cuff requests. Off the cuff requests. Um, I, in my own ward, will go and talk to the officers on issues like that, which I'm sure Mary has. But it's all gone into a plan, and we can't do a plan and throw it out of the window just like that. And that alone, I actually you know, would uh, oppose the recommendations made. Um, the gaps in the budget, that's all anecdotal. What was presented before was a well-thought-through planned budget, talked through in the in detail with the responsible officers and covered all the bases which <coughs> maximizes the budget to the borough's welfare. I oppose it. Thank you, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Bettison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I uh, uh, regret to say that I cannot support this uh, amendment. Um, firstly, uh, and I do, uh, I do congratulate uh, uh, the uh, the opposition for um, coming up with uh, what would appear to be um, well thought by them and well researched. And and I would have rather preferred that it wasn't a sort of shazam on the night. Um, the budget that we are proposing this evening is the work of no less than 12 months and to present a fully worked out uh, prudent sensible budget that maintains services for our residents only to have a list uh, a bit of a shopping list put on on as on the night um, is is unhelpful to say the least, and um, uh, and I would have welcomed a meeting about this some time ago, um, uh, but uh, we may, we maybe need to look at ways of talking before the event. Um, but um, I, I certainly can't uh, support the moves uh, as as put to us. One thing that I would say, however. 
and I would unequivocally agree with the leader of the opposition um, that bidding for funds, capital funding, is deplorable. It's expensive. It wastes public money. It's a huge waste of public money. And frankly, it is an insult to local authorities that we have to bid and, and enter into a beauty competition as to whether or not our capital projects can go forward. And indeed, if, uh, if Councillor Mrs Temperton would like to accompany me, I'm happy to go and see the Secretary of State and give him my opinions on it, and she's welcome to give him hers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Betterson. Any other member wish to speak to the amendment? <laughs> Just to be sure. Um, okay, I don't see any requests in the room. Madam Deputy Mayor, do we have anyone wishing to speak remotely? No, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, Councillor Mrs. Temperton, you have a right to reply. Um, well, most of this, well, all of this actually was in the response to the budget. And you managed to get and return from the Labour's response to the budget. Not some of the detail with the finance, but certainly the oval um, about the roads, about the parking was included in it. So it was there. You managed to overcome some of the things that the uh, overview and scrutiny budget uh, panel objected to. And I'm glad of that. I supported that as well. But this was already put before you in the response to the budget consultation from the Labour Group. Thank you, Councillor Temperton. The amendment as proposed is set on the screen. Um, can all those present in the chamber please indicate by raising your hand if you support the recommendation. Those against? Any abstentions? It has fallen. We now come back to the substantive motion. Um, <coughs> Councillor Bettison, you had reserved your right earlier. Would you like to speak now? I'm just wishing uh, to I'm, okay, sure. I'm yeah, quite happy to wait. Uh, Thank you. Councillor Birch, are you wishing to speak? Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Give me this. Years of experience. Okay. Um, actually, what I'd like to do, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, is ask uh, Councillor Hayden, and he's summing up, um, if he could address an issue. Uh, and, and that is there, there has uh, been uh, a, a totally inaccurate leaflet circulated in some areas of the borough that shows how the leaflet's authors uh, know nothing about council finance because it states council long-term debt now at over 411 million. That's just not on. But can you please, uh, uh, councillor, uh, in your summing up, confirm uh, this council's long-term debt situation uh, and why uh, the statement in that leaflet is inaccurate. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Councillor Dr. Barnard. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. When you come to set a budget for a council, it's at the end of the day all about priorities. It's all about sound finance. It's all about making sure that you can deliver sustainable services going forward. There are council budget debates taking place, one down the road in Slough, where not only will residents be facing a significantly higher council tax rise, but that council will not be delivering the things which are so important in addition to the statutory services. Financial sense is really important in delivering long-term successful services in a council. Well, what I heard from you, Councillor Mrs Temperton, tonight was loads of really good stuff. I couldn't disagree with a lot of what I heard, but it isn't a blueprint from running Bracknell Forest. The reason this year, for example, our spend on children's social care has gone down £1.5 million is because in the past we've not just spent more money, 
but we've invested the money and the resource we have wisely and doing the right things to reduce demand on our services. And that's something you won't be hearing in many other councils around the country this year as well. Equally, you won't be hearing about long-term spending on school improvement because when councils just decide to spend money on all sorts of little initiatives, they lose sight of what really matters, which is delivering those core services. So the budget that we're moving tonight is very, very clear in my view. First of all, it is about schools. It's about maintaining our partnership of challenge and accountability, but it's also about using our advisors to work with our schools to narrow the achievement gap between pupil and non-pupil premium pupils. I think that's an essential part of building on the basis of good schools. It's about actually promoting inclusion for all children. It's about transforming SEND from a service that's bolted on to something that's absolutely intrinsic in the thinking of all our schools. Yes, unfortunately, we have to bid for the special resource provision and special schools, but the bids are stronger because of the huge amount of investment work and understanding and knowledge that has gone into that over the last um, 18 months and certainly since the inspection that we had in 2021. We are continuing the transformation of that service. Uh, can I just say, Councillor Mr Temperton, it's not for want of trying that we want to find educational psychologists, speech and language therapists. They are very, very difficult to find. So just like with our social care staff, we need to go out and make sure we have creative and imaginative packages that can bring the very best people in the area to come and work with us and for us. And actually, if you have services which are judged outstanding, it becomes that little bit easier as well to attract those people. It's about further exploring in children's social care how we can strengthen the family safeguarding model. What I think is really impressive, this has promoted a huge amount of great partnership working where health, the police and other parties are on side and are invested and signed up to what we're doing. These are some of the core key things that a unitary authority has to do. These are the things I stood for election on in 1997 originally. You know, we were lambasted by many that we wouldn't be able to deliver sound budgets year on year. We wouldn't have the money, but you can only do it if you really focus in on those priorities and the things that you absolutely have to do and do well and never give up. And even when things are wrong, make sure that you have the financial headroom to put them right. So I actually sometimes think that we, we should be looking at how we spend our money better. So, for example, youth services. I read in the Labour Party response to this, Councillor Bidwell, you said, you know, Bracken Walk was open to invited parties as if we issued RSVPs, you know, and things like that. It's not. It's about meeting the needs of the most disadvantaged and challenged young people in the first instance. One-to-one -one support, support for those groups that actually need that, whilst at the same time working with many other partners in the borough about delivering more broad universal youth provision and measures will be coming forward. And why is that? Because I don't think our young people or residents really mind whether it's the council that does that or whether it's other people working with us and working for young people. That's how you deliver a sound financial budget where this year, unlike many councils, we're not cutting frontline services. I've read elsewhere, I think uh, Councillor Birchie was in the same leaflet that you know somebody was going on about the fact that we were cutting children's centres. Far from it. We're actually evolving those children's centres to furry family support centres, early intervention, working with those families. It should come as no surprise then that we have fewer children and young people progressing up through the scale of supports needing our care. Actually, it's about taking services out to people and to families. It's about using new technology and things like that. And finally, I think one of the things I'm most proud of, and thank you, Councillor Mr Temperton, for referencing it, it's the welfare group. It's the working group that we have as members that have looked at how we actually use the money that we have for hardship funds and supports across the borough over the last 18 months, two years, so actually towards the end of COVID. I'm really proud of that because not only have we used every single penny that we have been given to provide that support to families and residents in the borough, but we invested in the background with appropriate software tools, you know, the, the, the lift software, and with officers to make sure that we can maximise the amount of money that families can access. That, I think, is a very positive and pragmatic response to those families that we need. I'm proud of this budget. I'm proud of what this administration has delivered over the last four years. And I'm also humble enough to know that in some areas, particularly in SEND, we have much more work to do. But I'm confident with the capacity, with the officers that we have there, with the focus on that broader cultural change in that, and that focus to use an American expression, but I think it's one true on operational excellence in terms of delivery and communication, that we will continue to make fast progress there. Certainly the indication from those monitoring us are we that. So in conclusion, Yes, we can have all wonderful things that we want to do year on year, but the reason this year, colleagues, that we can set the budget in the way we do is because we have resisted the urge to do everything at all times whilst making sure that what we do is what really matters and will make a difference. 
I'm proud to support this budget, what this administration has achieved, the financial diligence that means as a council responsible for a huge area of statutory and less statutory services that we can continue to deliver for our residents and do it in a way to which we can all be proud. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barnard. Councillor Darrell. There we are. Sorry, it's uh, keep up with all these different uh, different technical things. It's uh, you know. anyway. Thank thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, in welcoming this budget, I'm pleased to see the proposed significant increase in highway maintenance spending coming as it does at a time of mounting need for maintaining a major asset of the Council. Approval of this budget will mean that maintenance programmes can be drawn up to make good use of these funds, as this Council has done consistently over the years. The additional funding will provide for greater emphasis on upkeep of residential streets. Given that there is not sufficient, still not sufficient funding to do cover all repairs, it is necessary to spend money objectively and so to, it is necessary to prioritise work. It is also to ensure the best possible levels of overall highway safety. Support for work to improve walking and cycling routes is important with the increase in these modes of travel we have seen in recent years. Regarding bus services, the Council will continue to work with bus operators to maintain services, looking to develop them as appropriate to respond to changing demand. Government support through the innovative £2 single fares cap adopted by our local <coughs> operators and now extended by three months to the 30th of June by the Government is proving an important means of encouraging more use of buses. Other support measures are key to this as all services continue to recover from the impact on bus, service, on bus patronage of COVID. So we do have uh, a number of significant success stories there. Um, we're always keen to do more, um, but it's, uh, it, these are discretionary services, and so that has to be borne in mind when putting together um, uh, our funding. But I do think we uh, are in a position to make progress, and I do welcome the considerable attention that's been given to officers um, in this part of the budget, um, and I, as I welcome the overall budget, which I think has been put together with care and responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tarrell. Councillor Bidwell. Thank you. Um, we welcome the uh, additional £25 reduction in council tax. Um, as this is a new initiative, uh, can the member give us some more detail about what discretionary means and what the eligibility is likely to be? So we are in debate at the moment. We are not in questions at the moment. We are in debate. Uh, is there any other particular point that you want to stress on? Okay, thank you. Any other councillor wish to speak? Yeah, Councillor Bettison. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, just uh, what one point that has been raised in this debate is the uh, low level of responses um, to our request uh, for to the public to make comments on our budget proposals and uh, and incidentally it's not a, uh, we are not unusual in the low level of responses but I just wonder whether it could just be and uh, uh, and I'm sure that those who have been spending a lot of time talking to residents lately, um, ir irrespective of what colour of rosette they've been wearing, they just may have found that residents in this borough trust the Conservative administration. They know that their money is being used wisely and prudently on things that matter to them. Now... I'm not suggesting that any of the uh, uh, proposals, uh, the alternative proposals that we've heard this evening, um, are not uh, of importance to people. But uh, we live in, as we have heard, very challenging times financially. And 
it is therefore impossible to do everything that we would like to do in this year. So we have to prioritise, that's a responsibility of being the administration, and uh, we have made what we honestly believe to be the best decisions in terms of uh, timing of expenditure. Um, that is what makes us describable as prudent. <coughs> and that is why we have a, 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 a budget here in a, an atmosphere of 10.6% inflation that only seeks to increase council tax by under 5%. And it's not being prudent that is the reason why a nearby authority, and as they're not a company, I can mention them, Slough, is raising their council tax by 10%. Um, and and, and interesting, interesting thing also is that... Um, the, the, uh, that such is their financial position that the public have had to be stopped from stopping them raising the council tax by 10% uh, because the government have allowed the administration there to do that without the necessity of convincing their residents to vote for it in a referendum. Likewise, of course, the, the even poorer done to residents of Croydon are witnessing an increase of 15% this year, again by special permission without having to have a referendum. Um, and uh, both those councils are hammering services. We don't see any reductions in services that we are proposing in our budget. Incidentally, I believe this, this week, or maybe even this evening, Slough are discussing £300,000 out of their library's budget. Well, I have to say, anybody who's had anything to do with libraries knows that that is not buying a few less books. That is opening a few less doors to libraries. And, but we're not doing that, and hopefully, no matter what is thrown at us, whilst we have a prudent conservative administration, we won't be doing it. But being prudent means sometimes having to say, we're not going to get what we want today. And, and that is the package, and that is why... Mr Mayor, I shall be supporting this budget today proudly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peterson. Councillor Bidwell, I have seen uh, your hand, but as per council procedure rules, a member is only allowed to speak once. So I'm sorry, I have to refuse that. Um, any other member wish to speak? Councillor Mrs Tempett. Can I just ask then, if we're not... if residents who are passionate about improving their environment and getting somewhere to park their car, if they're not going to, we didn't get it last year, they're not going to get it today, is there any hope in the near future that they may ever, ever get rid of these muds? My question, or no, a statement. It would be really good if somehow it was that what they wanted today would in the future be there. So we're not taking questions, you know, as I shared earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other member wish to speak? Okay. Councillor uh, Mr. Hayden, would you like to sum up? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you. Uh, before I deal with some of the other points, uh, first of all, uh, I'd just like to address uh, Councillor Burchard's question about uh, long term liabilities. It's wrong. They've misread whatever source document. <coughs> Uh, it's just wrong. Our long-term borrowing is £80 million. It's been there for a number of years. It hasn't increased. And it's also covered by 
uh, revenue producing assets whose value is in excess of the amounts borrowed. So first of all, our borrowing is much lower, it's much more secure, and it isn't very helpful when people can't read a balance sheet and start putting out false information, either knowingly or unknowingly. So, is Councillor Birch, are you happy that you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also to my colleagues for uh, addressing there's a, a lot of consistency in what they were saying, even though they were referencing their own portfolios at times. Um, and it comes back to, I'm not going to go through every point raised, but um, the budget has addressed the priorities. It has addressed the timing of those priorities. And I have every sympathy for what's going on in Great Holland. I also have every sympathy in what's going on in Wild Ridings and my own ward of Old Bracknell, the common problems and there's been a considered approach taken in terms of prioritising what we can do and, and when there should be time. And that is with the judgement and advice from officers who are professionally qualified in terms of assessing these. Again, what came through everywhere, the importance of sound finances, particularly as that it produces sustainability, sustainability in services. And I don't want to compare what happens elsewhere because my responsibility and focus is what happens in Bracknell Forest and that it is a product of sound finances, sound planning, sound priority making and sound sustainability. I don't really want to say anything else. I'd like to put it to the vote if I may, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Hayden. A recorded vote is required on this item. The recommendations are as set out on the screen. Councillors, please turn on your microphone only and state either for, against, or abstain when the Chief Executive calls your name. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I have Councillor Allen. For. Councillor Atkinson. Councillor Dr. Barnard. Four. Councillor Betterson. Four. Councillor Bidwell. Abstain. Councillor Bandari. Four. Councillor D. Birch. Four. Councillor Mrs. Birch. Four. Councillor Bossard. Four. Councillor Brown. Abstain. Councillor Dudley. Four. Councillor Ms. Gore. Four. Councillor Badibo. Four. Councillor Mrs. Gibson. Four. Councillor Gibson. Four. Councillor Green. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hamilton. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Four. Thank you. Councillor... Mrs. Hayes. Four. Councillor Hayden. Four. Councillor Mrs. Ingham. Four. Councillor Kennedy. No, sorry. Councillor Kirk. Four. Councillor Leake. Four. Councillor Mrs. Mattock. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor McLean. Four. Uh, Councillor Ms. Mary. Four. Councillor Mossum. Four. Councillor Neil. Abstain. Uh, Councillor Templeton, uh, Temperton. Abstain. Councillor Turrell. Four. Councillor Virgo. Councillor Wade. Four.
Mr Mayor, that's 27 for, none against, and four abstain. Thank you, Madam Chief Executive. That is carried. Okay. The item on Agenda 7, or Agenda Item 7, is the annual update of the Council's pay statement. If that is set out on the screen, if any councillor has a question, can you please indicate that you wish to speak, and I will come to you in turn. We have Councillor Leek, would you um, present the statement to the Council? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the report refers to the annual update of the Council's pay statement. This is a statutory requirement that the Council has to carry out uh, each year. M members may recall that a few months ago we, we did the one for the previous year a little bit uh, late. This year we've managed to catch up and to present the uh, pay statement for the 23-24 year uh, well in advance of the commencement uh, of that year. And uh, I take this opportunity to uh, thank the director and staff of the uh, HR department and their teams for the work that they've done to uh, bring us to this point where we are uh, in time and a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, the statement is uh, self-explanatory. It covers virtually uh, every aspect of data required uh, by the uh, legislation uh, to be produced. It has been through the Employment Committee uh, and they have uh, reviewed it and accepted its contents and I would therefore ask Council uh, to do the same. Uh, and uh, in doing that, I will therefore move the recommendation on page at uh, 2.1, on page 207, that the Council review and agree the pay policy statement for 23-24. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Leek. Is that seconded? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Nick Allen, I'd be happy to second that. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions in the room. Um, Madam Deputy Mayor, are there any questions from those joining remotely? There are not, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So we were on questions. Does any councillor wish to speak or debate on this point? I don't see anything. Um, councillor, uh, sorry, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, anyone wants to speak remotely? They do not, thank you. So the recommendations are set out on the screen. Can all those present in the chamber please indicate by raising your hand if you support the recommendations. Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? That is carried. We now come to agenda item number eight, which is the appointment of deputy electoral registration officers. Um, I think that is set out on the screen. Councillor Birch, would you like to move the recommendation? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Birch. Uh, moving the recommendation at uh, paragraph 2.1 of uh, the report. Thank you. Is that seconded? Councillor Ian Leake, that is seconded, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Leake. Does any member have a question? Okay. Madam Deputy Mayor, is there any question from those joining remotely? Not at this time, thank you. Okay. I know it's a bit repetitive, but does anyone wish to speak on this recommendation? Okay, anyone wishes to speak <laughs> remotely? They have not indicated so, okay. no, thank the you. Recommendation are set out on the screen. Can all those present in the chamber please indicate by raising your hand if you support the recommendations. Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? That is carried. We have received notice of 
two questions which are set out at item 9 at the beginning of your agenda and on the screen in turn. I would like to remind both the responder and the questioner that answers and supplementary questions should arise directly from the question or the reply provided and be succinct. Councillor Temperton, are you content for us to take your question as read? I am. Thank you. Councillor Birch, can I request you to respond? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Birch. Um, and uh, uh, I'm sure everyone uh, is uh, disappointed uh, that uh, CQC found that a number of areas uh, uh, remain below the expected standard uh, at uh, the uh, Heathlands uh, dementia care uh, part of Heathlands uh, uh, in a number of areas. Uh, but um, the council and our NHS professionals, we continue to work closely with the provider uh, um, to assist them uh, to meet those improvements. Uh, Windsor Care has acknowledged the report uh, and has taken steps to address uh, the key issues. Uh, the new permanent registered manager, because that happened uh, shortly uh, before the second inspection and has now been in post uh, for uh, uh, three months. The Windsor Care have engaged with specialists, independent organisations to assist them and uh, to provide assurance. And one of the things I am aware of uh, uh, from comments uh, from uh, the families of uh, the residents there is, uh, and it was acknowledged in the report, that the residents uh, uh, do uh, uh, feel so, so safe and well cared for in there. Windsor Care, it, has been taking a range of actions uh, and uh, hopefully uh, 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 the next time uh, the CQC visits, uh, uh, they will find uh, the uh, systems in there are uh, sufficient and of sufficient quality uh, to improve their rating. And they, they, uh, CQC will come back in a, in a few months' time uh, to uh, examine them again. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Councillor Ms. Temperton, you have a supplementary question? Yes, I have. Thank you. When the CQC come again, is it going to be a full inspection? And what happens if the results remain the same then? Uh, it, it will be a, a follow-on inspection because they're in that regime, uh, in that, uh, as far as I'm uh, aware. And uh, at that point, uh, they uh, will continue to make uh, the necessary recommendations uh, and uh, they will uh, uh, deal with the provider uh, when it comes to uh, what action is then needed. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Moving on to our second question, set out at, at item 9 at the beginning of your agenda and on the screen. Councillor Bidwell, are you content for us to take your question as read? Yes, I am. Can we? Okay. Um, Councillor Birch, can you please respond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Birch. Um, I, in uh, setting out to answer uh, the question, um, I uh, was very concerned uh, that uh, the question is about concerning reports of, uh, of five or six minutes. I, I have to say um, that I've not had any uh, uh, concerning reports uh, uh, like that. Um, so um, my response is to the literal uh, of uh, the question. Uh, as the uh, reports uh, uh, that are being referenced at the top of the question, uh, I'm assuming are a, uh, referred to as being elsewhere. Um, in April uh, 22, uh, the council mobilized its new home care framework 
and established new contractual arrangements in the home care market. Uh, to be able to join the new framework, all providers are required uh, as a minimum to be rated good or outstanding by the CQC. Uh, this ensures at, at the baseline level the level of quality uh, that can be expected. Through the framework, the council has taken uh, robust, me robust measures to ensure such practice uh, as referred to in the question uh, does not occur here in Bracknell Forest. Uh, and we have processes in place to ensure uh, where this, were this to occur, um, it would be identified very quickly and rectified. Um, and an, an explanation there is under the framework, the minimum time allocation for any care call is 30 minutes and the providers must invoice a company, submit an invoice accompanied by the workers' timesheets to be paid in order to get paid. The timesheets are generated by the provider uh, using an electronic call monitoring system. And uh, further stipulates that within the framework, a provider must be able to, on arrival at uh, a home, uh, log on and put their arrival time. And when they have completed uh, their support tasks, uh, they use the new technology to uh, check out when they have finished the end of the call so that at all times the duration of the call uh, is monitored and people are, are only paid for qualifying uh, periods of time and activities. Care teams also undertake regular reviews of individuals' needs and to ensure that the needs of the individuals are met by an appropriate and current package. And uh, providers uh, are also subject to robust regular contract management as stipulated by our <coughs> contract managing, the contract monitoring framework uh, for additional security uh, and quality. Now, if uh, the standard of quality uh, of the service uh, that is being delivered falls <coughs> below the required level, the contract provides a number of mechanisms to address this from the implementation of an improvement plan right the way through to the contract being terminated. So uh, we are comfortable that the uh, wherever they were concerned uh, that uh, our uh, vulnerable residents should not be concerned. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Councillor Bidwell, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much for that. I'm glad that uh, 30 minutes is the minimum. I'm hoping that uh, on occasion it's more than that. Uh, could you uh, provide any um, background as to the type of uh, providers innovation that's being deployed for domiciliary care. Um, as many members may know uh, that if you have technology you can reduce the visits and therefore the visits that are there are can be, can be longer and then more of a quality. Um, quality Councillor Bidwell can I humbly state that the supplementary should arise directly from the main question and it doesn't appear, you know, what you're stating in terms of technology is directly from the original question. Oh. Do you have a supplementary that arises originally, uh, directly from the original question? I'm happy to interpret his question if he wishes. Oh, how good of you. Thank you. Uh, as to minimum 30 minutes, the word minimum informs everybody that packages can be uh, much larger than 30 minutes. And... Uh, some of the innovation you're talking about can be uh, that some uh, visits are for two carers. So where people go in uh, uh, with two support workers because of the nature of 
the re support requirements. But uh, the use of technology, and uh, I, can I recommend to all members that they uh, um, understand about what we do at Forest Care, because I really want to make a plug for one of the most human sensitive parts of the services that we deliver. And what we do, we give people not just monitoring fobs, but we give them technology that will monitor their blood pressure, their breathing, their, and, and their movement around the house. Today there is technology that will even track how people are moving when they're standing up, etc. Within forest care, it, they can monitor people remotely, they can monitor people's ring doorbells, they can speak to someone delivering to the house, and they can deal with that without ever disturbing our most vulnerable residents if that's appropriate. And they can buzz in appropriate carers and making sure that they are uh, the, the right people, etc. So the use, I'm absolutely, you've got me on my, one of my favourite subjects, Councillor, because caring for our most vulnerable is absolutely the way, I, and using technology not just to exclude other people contact, because there must be human contact. We cannot have them remote and lonely. We must use the technology wisely, and we do. I commend Forest Care to you. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I now declare the meeting closed.